Pop culture addicts know that Britney Spears has provided as much interest off stage as on. Her scintillating relationships and offbeat haircuts captivated fans and raised volumes of tabloid speculation. Now we can relive all of Brit's best dramatic moments through an upcoming unauthorized Lifetime biopic. Here's ABC's Nick Watt. That is one of the biggest selling singles of all time. And Britney, an idol ever since Mickey Mouse Clubhouse days. Later, one half of the late 90s double denim power couple. Her debut album, one of the best selling ever by a teenaged artist. Then, 10 years ago, Almost to the day, Britney Spears shaved her own head in a California salon. The implosion of an interplanetary pop princess. Recreated in Britney Ever After, premiering Saturday night, where else but Lifetime. Natasha Bassett is Britney. Having tried to get inside her head, what do you think she was going through? I think she got into something at a very young age that almost cannibalized her. She went all red leather raunchy. I'm not that Oops, an early smash. Britney is just 18 years old. Seeing her as a sort of a prisoner of celebrity, she can't go anywhere, she can't do anything without having protection. And you know, it's like living in a glass box. You're not trashing her in this. No, no, absolutely not. This is a love letter to Britney. But still a totally unauthorized biopic, a Spears spokesperson telling us Britney will not be contributing to the project in any way, shape or form, nor does it have her blessing. How did that play in the back of your mind? It's always difficult to play someone who's still with us and can view the work you're doing and you just want to do them justice. Away! In the pantheon of stars given the Lifetime movie treatment, Whitney, Anna Nicole Smith, Aaliyah, most have passed. For me, in the sense, because it was an unauthorized, I didn't find it as challenging because I didn't have to stay true to exactly what was going on. It was impressionistic. Guess what, Mama? I'm married. This is Natasha Bassett's actual audition tape. Our idea wasn't necessarily to find a carbon copy of her. It was to find an actor who could embody her essence. I don't think we resemble each other a great deal. Bassett, if you hadn't guessed, is Australian. I want to be alone! How did you do the Louisiana accent? <laughs> You're from Sydney. I just played her interviews all the time, and the minute I found out I was playing Britney Spears, I went into her accent right away. Also yeah. studying Britney's more difficult days, moments perhaps like this 2006 Dateline interview. You have to realize that we're people, and that we, need, we just need privacy and we need our respect. You know, if it was a darker time in her life, I would just be crying every time I, I watch an interview. The 2007 VMA's performance, another sign something was very wrong. I had no desire to recreate that moment. There's no way I could. I decided that it really was a feeling. And if we could have it more visceral, we could feel what she's feeling, then it would be interesting. It's right here, it's always with you. The movie centers on Spears' relationship with Justin Timberlake, played by Nathan Keyes. It's young love. It's like uh, star-crossed lovers, you know, Romeo and Juliet. It's, it's, a, it's a story that we can all relate to. Excuse me, can I see the playback? But potential career suicide for a young actor? What? I look horrible. He saw me like that. I did have my doubts at first, but it was when I read the script that I decided, no, I have to do this film. I want to tell this story. Why? Because it's a showing of strength, and I think it's a feminist story at its core. Feminist Phoenix, from this to hell. The Timberlake breakup. Justin, it's not what you think. You and me, we're it's done. It's not like that, Justin. Then the Kevin Federline marriage. He makes me so happy. I want to spend the rest of my life with him. Remember, Spears isn't cooperating. You made the movie without using any of her own music. That's right. We couldn't. We got the rights to songs that she had performed. 
Ah. And we had the girls who auditioned for Britney sing I Love Rock and Roll in the audition a cappella. This movie hasn't even come out yet, and already people have strong opinions. Oh, of course. You know? Of course. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like, the two of the most iconic pop stars of all time are suddenly the subject of a film, and they're so beloved. There is a section of the internet that is already, having not seen it, saying, I hate this, this is awful. I stay away from it. Some tweets, hashtag RIP the entire cast's careers, who told Lifetime it was okay, a hate crime, trash, cringeworthy, but I still really want to watch it. Will you read them after it, it after airs? No. I don't really need to know that people hated what I did. <laughs> it's more about who Britney Spears is as a human being, not just a performer. Surprise! It's a raw human story that was played out in public, thankfully with a happy ending. Yeah, otherwise I don't think they would have done it. If the head shaving was the final scene. <laughs> yeah. Be a cliffhanger. Britney, of course, now has a residency in Vegas and stability. Yesterday, the actual 10th anniversary of her public meltdown, she posted this on Instagram. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. How do you think she will feel if she sees this? I think she's gonna love it. Do you think Britney will watch herself? I hope so. I hear she's a fan of Lifetime. One, two. I'm Nick Watt for Nightline. Five, six, In West Hollywood. Seven,